Hello and welcome to another edition of the New Hampshire Filmmaker Interview Series here on Portsmouth Public Media, PPM-TV. I'm very excited about our guest today. I have from Hammer and Saw Films, the co-director of the New Hampshire Film Festival selected feature-length documentary, 100 Head, Heart, Feet, Mr. Mike Mooney. Mike. Great to have you here today. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. This is a blast. So congratulations on uh, the festival. It's very exciting. Yeah, we couldn't be happier. I mean, yeah. as we are a you know, New Hampshire-based company, you know, uh, this is huge for us. Uh, we know, uh, you know the history of the film festival. We know how many wonderful films they bring in and how difficult it is to select probably out of the thousands right. that they're getting. Uh, so was this your first submission to the festival? This is actually our second. Mm -hmm. uh, our last film, uh, Exit 7A, was uh, accepted uh, last year, and uh, that was our first uh, opportunity to be part of the festival. Um, but this one's big for us, being uh, as this is our first uh, feature length. Yeah, and we'll get, we'll get more into the film in a second, but um, can you tell us uh, 100 Head, Heart, Feet? Yes. What does that refer to? What, is your, what's your, what do we need to know about your film going into it? Uh, that's a great question because uh, uh, didn't really tell you anything about you know <laughs> until you, you know, kind of get into it. But uh, hundred, of course, is the distance uh, that our subject Zach Whelan's ran or uh, potentially ran uh, during the Vermont 100 endurance race. We'll have to watch to find out. Right? Exactly, <laughs> and but I have to pause you for a second. Sure, sure. He ran or tried to run one. 100 yeah. miles. Yeah. This is a thing that people do. 300 uh, sign up usually. Mm -hmm. uh, they cap it at 300 at the Vermont 100. And uh, yeah, yeah, we thought he was crazy. Everybody thought he was crazy when he first uh, announced that he was going to do it in 2011. And uh, I decided to go with him. Uh, I was going to help him out. And as a supporter or as a running buddy? What they call uh, my position was a handler or a Sherpa. So I was making sure <laughs> that he ate plenty of food, stayed cool, <laughs> didn't pass out and you know, you know, roll down into a, a ditch or anything. Um, we also had our other good friend, Kevin Kerner there, who was his pacer uh, for the last 30 miles. And uh, you know, while he was attempting to run this, I drove about 120 miles through the backwoods of Vermont. Uh, chasing him, trying to find him at each aid station to make sure he was uh, all right. That year, in 2011, he ran 92 miles and then collapsed. Um, he, uh, he ran the heck out of it. It was m one of the most spectacular ac athletic events I had ever seen, and I've been playing sports my entire life. Um, now, was this prior to filming, or w was this an event this that is prior to, prior to filming. This this is the inspiration. It's 2011. Right. Um, we didn't actually uh, follow him until 2012-13, uh, leading into the 2013 race. So this is what really uh, sparked my interest because you know I'm from Vermont. I had never heard about the Vermont 100 endurance race. Uh, and then when I got there and saw that it looked like a Grateful Dead concert, but with <laughs> you know runners instead of drug users, uh, it was uh, kind of this like, man. Why haven't I heard about this? And man, this is beautiful. And then you get there at four in the morning to see these 300 people with headlamps on. And I'm like, this is visually so stimulating. Mm -hmm. It's surreal. And that's, I thought it was so beautiful that I was like, ah, maybe we should make a film about it. Yeah, this. that's a great entry point uh, to talk about how you made this film. Yeah. So what, what was it? Can you talk more about what it was about that? that atmosphere and, and Zach's story in particular that sort of planted yeah. the seed for 100 head, heart, feet? You know, I don't think I would have gone into it um, without Zach. Um, it was his story in particular and my knowledge of Zach uh, over about 14 year period that I believe allowed us to tell a good story. How do we just pick some random ultra runner that we didn't know? I don't think we would have been able to dive as deep as we did. Um, and, you know, kind of going back, you know, when I went there um, in 2011, he ran after training for a year and collapsed after 92 miles. And I looked at him in the infirmary on the tent, you know, uh, in, in the, the bed, and he was like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, dude, you just ran 92 <laughs> miles. That's amazing. Right, right. And, you know, a week later, he called me back. He's like, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to try it, see what I can do. 
So he went back again in 2012. He was in better shape, he was focused, he had learned a lot from the previous year, and he lined up in 2012 to run it, and at mile 30 he had a baker cyst burst in the back of his knee. He uh -huh. hiked another 10 miles, but at uh, mile 40, he decided that if he were to go on any further, he would have some irreparable damage. Yeah. And he had a back out. The very next day, um, he called me and he said, Mike, I'm going back. And it was that mentality of, I've been knocked down, but I'm going to pick myself back up wipe off the dirt and go what I go get what I want go achieve something great that at that moment I was like Zach you know that Will and I have been making films for years now he said yes he said we've been talking about this for the past two years we're gonna follow you for the next year and you know find out why you're doing this find out what it takes to do this find out how you know an individual has the capability of doing that? Is there something special about this guy? I mean, we took him through a VO2 max test, all sorts of physical tests to see, you know, is he a superhuman? And it turns out, no, he's not. Um, mm -hmm. It's will, it's determination, and um, it's the head, the heart, it's and the, the head, feet. the heart, and the feet. Yeah, that's that's right. And there's something, there's something, almost, it's a comparable to. Like Greek tragedy or something, <laughs> just in the way, you know, you talk about this guy who is apologizing to you right. for only running 92 out of 100 miles. He well, dragged me out there. Yeah. He's like, I got to get to 100. And I <laughs> but, said, oh, it's But there's something, you know, we yeah. go on these quests and we have these goals. And when we, when we fall just short of the goal, we sort of forget the monumental achievements that happens leading up to that goal. It's a really fascinating story and a really fascinating subject. Uh, you know, if I had the time, I could get 300 different stories because each Absolutely. individual there has that story. I met a gentleman who uh, had lost his son. Uh, his wife had been battling breast cancer. And the only thing that he said that was his saving grace was his running. I had another woman who I met who, uh, you know, had run 100 100 milers, and she said, I've only finished 50 of them. I found that to be spectacular and amazing. Yeah. I, I, I was like, why, why would you, if you're only finishing half of them, she's like, it's just all part of the, the journey. Right. Yeah. So do you find, do you find um, Zach, the subject of your film, to be sort of uh, uh, representative of, of, of that culture as a whole, or is he just sort of one slice of a... I think Zach pie. represents a little bit of every one of us. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't go and get an elite runner and say, oh, look at this guy. He's amazing. He's spectacular. He finishes first every single time that he, you know, steps up to the line. We got, you know, a gentleman that has a job, you know, works 60 hours a week, supports his, you know, his wife and his child, and um, doesn't neglect them. You know, he, he deals with the the challenges that we all are faced with you know mm -hmm. whether it be uh, you know making sure that he takes the garbage out in the morning or <laughs> you know getting you know what he needs to get done at work to make sure that he's he's providing so um, you know the fact that he isn't um, you know superhuman the fact that he's um, just like everybody else also was intriguing to me because you know I see a lot of wonderful people with a lot of like uh, you know dreams and hopes and, and, and desires and this is kind of like saying like well look at Zach he's just like you right I mean he, he was not a runner he was like the antithesis of a runner before uh, he started running uh, back in 2002 mm -hmm. and uh, so you know the transformation is, is something spectacular too mm -hmm. so um before we get into the nuts and bolts of making making the film, yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about uh, about this this event, which sure. which was news to me until right. I heard you talking about it a couple of months ago. Um, so these are day long events, I'm assuming, where people are running 100 miles in in one shot. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. So what happens is it's on a weekend, typically. Uh, well, later in July, the 19th, 20th, and 21st, uh, I think it was in 2013 when we went. And people arrive on Friday afternoon, they get out of work, and they cruise over 
um, to uh, Vermont uh, in West Windsor. And it, it's kind of like the best kept secret in Vermont because, you know, there's no spectators or there's very few. Right. And it's this tiny little hill on, on, on the top of, uh, you know, a farm uh, in, in West Windsor. And people come pop their tents. They go and, you know, get their, you know, the updates for the year. They get their medical checks. They, you know, make sure that their blood pressure is okay, that their weight, uh, they have to have their weight checked four times throughout the entire race. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then there's a community dinner. It's this big, you know, like, you know, let's get together, 300 of us, and, you know, then tomorrow we'll go run 100 miles. Um, and then everybody migrates towards their tents. Uh, it's kind of like a, a big concert in a field, but instead of, you know, music, there is running. And everybody, you know, gets in their tent, and, you know, not many people sleep. In fact, the night uh, that we were there on the 19th, there was a giant like thunder and lightning storm and it was very ominous and you know kind of like ah oh, is this what we're you know going to be expecting for the next day uh, you know a terrible horrible monsoon um and then at 4 a.m everybody wakes up and they mosey down to you know the starting line which is you know right where the uh the, the tents are for the food and everything and the announcements turn on their headlamps and the year we were there was the 25th anniversary so they had fireworks <laughs> at four in the morning. Uh, neighbors weren't too pleased, <laughs> but at four in the morning uh, with 300 people in the middle of a field with headlamps on, it was uh, quite an amazing scene to be a part of. And they have the race director who's been part of this her entire life, countdown, you know, 10, nine, eight, you know, three, two, one. And then they go off out into the woods and then like two minutes later, it's as if nothing ever happened. Right. And it's, it's mystical. Right. Do you, then do they have 24 hours to finish it to get a belt buckle, <laughs> a belt buckle. And then the people that are between 24, 01 and 30 hours are also considered finishers. But if you're past the 30 hour mark, you get pulled. Huh. So there is a time limit to completing the 100. And, you know, it depends on the year, but there's usually about a 60, 65% um, uh, finish rate. Um, but every year varies. There's also, I think it was four years previous um, to me being there, there was like, uh, you know, 95 degree weather, humidity through the roof, and uh, they had like a 40% finish rate. Yeah. Uh, there's so many factors that can come in right. that can really uh, right. ruin an individual's day. And uh, so it, it's, it's walking on a fine line the entire time. It's, yeah, it's incredible, incredible lifestyle and incredible culture and it sounds like an incredible vibes. Do you, do you feel like you captured it in your film? Um, I, I'm, I'm letting other uh, individuals determine if, if we've captured it. And, and so far, our feedback has been fantastic, specifically from the ultra running groups. Mm -hmm. um, I've also had uh, individuals outside of the running world come to me who are artists or you know, full-time you know, uh, you know, businessmen. And they say, you know, I might not be a runner, but I can relate to Zach because it's something that you know while i don't run I, I choose to you know do art and i've had my struggles I've, I've i've had my failures but i keep on going back yeah and um so you know so far we, we've been having some really good reception Great. and 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 you know it was important for me to uh, have acceptance too from uh, zach's family you know i've known them of course for uh, again for a very long time and, and they enjoyed the film so as long as they did and the runners are liking it, you know, I'm definitely pleased. Great. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at a clip. Um, here is a clip from um, Mike Mooney and Hammer and Saw Films, 100 Head, Heart, Feet. And we'll be right back. It is absolutely amazing what the human body can do, but it's even more amazing what our mind can make us do. During 100 miles, your body physically just it breaks down and you really have to rely on your mental state to get you through. Something in a hundred miles as little as a, a one negative thought can really ruin your day. Just saying, oh I feel awful, this is awful, I can't do this. And that keeps going through your mind mile after mile. It's going to be tough to, to finish that hundred miles. The magic comes when you get to that point of physically you're done and mentally, you're just, you're out somewhere, somewhere else, 
that you've never been in your, your normal state of, of being. And that introspective look deep, deep, deep inside your soul of, I'm just gonna put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward. Right, great. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, I'm C.J. Lewis, your host for today's edition of the New Hampshire Filmmaker Interview Series on PPM TV, Portsmouth Public Media. My guest today is Mr. Mike Mooney, co-director of the film 100 Head, Heart, Feet. Um, and man, what I, I cannot wait to see this in its entirety. Uh, what you've told me about it has me very excited as, as a as a fan of documentaries, as a fan of sports movies, and as a fan of really rich human stories. I think it's, from what you've told me, it sounds like it's sort of all there, so. It's certainly layered, that's <laughs> for sure. You know, our, our, our intent going into this was to make uh, a, a film that tells a story, not make a, a film about running. Right. Um, because, you know, um, we, we wanted to reach you know, a, a wider audience than just, you know, a very, you know, right. niche. I mean, although, I mean, there's, uh, you know, uh, about 10 million runners out there, so there's quite a few. Yeah. But, um, you know, we're, we're filmmakers. Uh, we're not documentarians. Right. Um, so so let's, let's talk about how, so this was your first um, foray into this yes. mode of storytelling, right? Yes. So what, what, and you shot most of this footage, I take it, during this individual race over the course of 24 hours, 36 hours? Well, uh, we, we captured about, um, geez, it was about 70, 75 hours worth of footage at the race itself. But um, we had followed him for about a year and a half um, prior to uh, the, the, the race itself. And um, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was, you know, weekend shoots. It was going out and chasing him running, going and going to other races, interviewing other um, other runners, interviewing psychologists, interviewing uh, doctors of uh, sports science, um, to get perspective to uh, you know why people do this, how people do this, um, and uh, it, it was uh, probably over 200 hours of footage uh, that we captured over that uh, time period. How many people did you have working on the project? Uh, well, you know, we are a pretty sparse crew, um, Hammer and Saw Films, uh, for the majority of the time, and there's about uh, five of us. Um, but uh, for the race itself, we had a crew of 20. Uh, we had, uh, we were super lucky. Uh, we have a great um, group, great community of uh, uh, media makers uh, from Colby Sawyer College. Uh, we had alumni, students, uh, faculty, and staff come out and uh, basically uh, do what I was calling a, a you know, ultra marathon Indian sprint, where we had you know, one through five crews um, going from aid station to aid station, and then you know, aid station one, crew one, they finish up, Zach goes by, then they go to crew station five, and then two goes to six, and so, so on and so like forth. So it sounds like it's required a lot of logistical planning it was Before a logistical planning, yeah. Oh, leading up to it was, uh, you know, we were getting, and it's not easy either because the Vermont 100 doesn't publish their map. It goes through 77 different um, private properties. So, you know, these private property owners don't want people going, oh, I'm going to go, you know, run this course when, you know, it's right through their backyard, which I respect. 
Um, so we were, you know, we went out uh, with Lou Schmertz, who has been uh, part of uh, the uh, Vermont 100 for 20 years now, uh, helping out, um, doing a lot of the uh, safety work on the back end. So if people are dropping out, he would get people to come uh, medically to mm -hmm. take care of them. And uh, he took us on a Jeep on, on, on all the <laughs> class four roads through the trails um, so we could get an understanding of what yeah. we were up against. And there's no communication. Cell phones are dead. Right. The only form of communication on that race is ham radio. And we are not ham radio certified, <laughs> so we were not allowed to operate said ham it radio. Sounds like we could have made a film about you making the film. Oh, certainly. <laughs> oh, I mean, it, it, was, it was something that, again, you know, we're super lucky with our team. I mean, like, yeah. everybody was like, on board, uh, you know, game on, let's, you know, make the best film possible. And it was cool because, you know, I, I, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. And when you get there with 20 people and they're thinking all the same, like there's no script, there's no set, you know, we basically have to be filmmaking ninjas and not interact with the runners and, you know, run into one of them, bump into them, because we can't shoot this again. We can't right. say, cut, you know, so it was, uh, it how, was a lot of sweat. How many cameras did you have in the field? Uh, we had uh, uh, about 12 cameras that were, you know, interchanging throughout the, the entire thing from, you know, Panasonic's to Canon's to GoPro's. Um, to some uh, some drones um, had a little bit of everything, and uh, you know that that formatting wise on the back end uh, editing wise yeah. uh, was a challenge. I think like we're going to start seeing more drone technology used, even in smaller projects like like this. It's it's sort mm -hmm. of such an accessible, an interesting tool to to put in the toolbox now. It really yeah. is. It really is. We didn't want to make it like this. Uh, you know, like oh, it's just all. Style over substance. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually didn't use a lot of the, the, the drone mm -hmm. stuff um, in the film. Um, but uh, Fun to play with, I'm sure. Tons though. of fun. Yeah. And we got some amazing footage. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we also just played with the Movi, uh, which is amazing. But that's the thing is we didn't have the Movi for the, um, the race, which I'm like, that's fine because it gives it realness when, Absolutely. like, because I was running along with a camera next to Zach, next to his handlers and going like, what's going on? What's happening? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yeah. And um, you can see, and, and, and I think in turn can feel, right. um, you know, kind of what they're going through. Well, there's something, that. there's some, there's an energy to that. We're all in this together. Yeah. You know, we're not quite sure how this is going to go. Right. We're kind of improvising a little bit yep. as we go. We have this amount of time to capture what we want to capture. Yep. Um, and you've and got a, a gentleman who hasn't finished. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of pressure on him yeah. as well. I mean, he said leading up to it, he said the, the entire year that it, it kept his training honest. Mm -hmm. He was doing, you know, 60, 70, 80 mile weeks. And then on his off days was doing, you know, crazy workouts to, you know, strengthen his entire body. He's like, years before I hadn't, you know, gone as far. So, you know, he was definitely, you know, part of it and, and into it. He wanted to put forth the best uh, he possibly right. could. So it was, uh, you know, a lot of pressure on, on all, all parties involved. So was this, was this a new experience for a vast majority of, of your crew on the project? Uh, Everybody, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, going into this, you know, everything we've done, you know, I've been studio work yeah. and set work, um, uh, script work. And, you know, this was, you know, brand new. There was no, like, uh, you know, tenured uh, documentarian that, uh, you know, joined us. Sure. We would have loved that, um, but... Uh, but it know. almost frees you up, too, to sort of find your own voice together and, and, and make it what it wants to be. Certainly with does. this group of people in these circumstances at this time. That's right. You know, so you're sort of, you're, you're, you're capturing a, you know, not only a moment in your subject's life, but sort of this, this, this moment in your collective creative lives too, which is kind of exciting. It certainly mm -hmm. was. You know, the stars definitely aligned for this project. We've, mm -hmm. you know, worked on a number of projects where it's like, oh, geez, you know, we can't, you know, schedule Bob because, you know, he's right. up in uh, Poughkeepsie and, you know, he can't be here on the yeah. weekend of that. So, you know, projects fall through. like. And that could have very well happened for this. I mean, we, we were lucky enough to have, I mean, we needed production money, so we did a Kickstarter that led up to the day before the race. And we're like, oh, geez, if we don't get, you know, our goal. We don't get any of it. We don't get any of it. And how are we going to color correct? How are we going to, you know, sound correct? All mm -hmm. that jazz. 
Um, so, you know, we were fortunate enough to have a wonderful running community who wanted to see this film as well, and they backed it. We were going for $15,000, we actually raised 18000 wow. and, um, you know, it was, you know, the moment that it surpassed the 15000 that I was like, Hmm. I guess we do have a story here. People who haven't even don't even know Mike Mooney are willing to back this because they want to see you know this story about ultra running. They want to see a story about you know someone that's just like them. And you're giving yeah, and you're giving a voice to to, to people who might not otherwise have that or have that opportunity to share this very important large aspect of their their lives. You could yeah. see the winner of the Vermont 100 from last year walk down the street and you wouldn't know it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that's something that, uh, you know, all of the runners so far that I've seen this, is like, you know, this, this, is, um, this is a good representation of us. Did you find that your, your closeness to the subject personally, to, to Zach, did that, um, did that affect your process at all? Did that, did that make it more difficult to sort of look at the, look at the piece at a distance? I, I struggled with that a lot because I've, I've known him uh, for 14 years. I've gone through a lot uh, with Zach. Uh, seen him fail uh, or collapse at 92. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very protective of him because he's a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, wanted to be able to tell a story and, and, and kind of dive as deep as possible. So I had a lot of conversations with him and said like, hey, we're gonna you know, potentially get into some, you know, some, some stuff that's uh, gonna get emotional. Right. Um, and are you ready for that? And he said, yeah, yeah we, we can do that. That's great. Yeah. Um, what's, what's inspiring you right now? Or what was, what was inspiring you going into this project? Other filmmakers or... or Gee, well, not having, you know, a documentary background, my inspirations, geez, you know, I was just talking to Will, my co-director and, and, and partner for Hammer and Soft Films. Uh, I, I, I was like, you know, it's the Andersons, it's the PTs, it's the Wes. You know, those guys are, you know, kind of what I grew up uh, watching. I remember seeing Boogie Nights in the, you know, the theater being like, that's filmmaking, that's awesome, this is cool, I love this. And like I just saw the trailer for Inherent Vice, uh -huh. and um, I'm like, oh, I can't wait for you know to see you know that movie. So it, it, it's it's been you know uh, storytellers um, that have you know really been and, and you know I mean, Wes Anderson he's he's an auteur. Well, the, yeah, those those words are just the, the worlds are just so alive. They're so rich. Yeah. Like you can see all of the. The, the, le the, the rivers running beneath all oh, yeah. of those characters, you know, and all, their, all the past histories and things. Totally. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what also is inspiring me today is um, the fact that, you know, we're seeing more filmmakers. We're seeing, you know, people able to make film um, a lot more, uh, e a lot easier um, because, you know, the technology is such that, you know, people are capable of it. Now, is, is it easy? Is it like something that everybody, you know, has a complete project in? But that's, you know, like here locally, you have your Port Portsmouth Short Film Night that's going on, you know, uh, you know, quarterly. You know, that, that's the kind of stuff that inspires me because you're seeing, you know, creativity, at, uh, you know, a very honest and very, uh, right. um, you know, early stage. and. And I love that stuff. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Well, on behalf of uh, the creative community, thanks for carrying the flag, Mike. <laughs> I'm so pleased to have uh, you yeah. know, been here, and I really appreciate yeah. uh, you know uh, being on PPM TV. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Uh, Mike's film is 100 Head, Heart, Feet. is a feature-length documentary that is um, will be at the New Hampshire Film Festival, August 16th, 17th, 18th and 19th right here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, I'm your host CJ Lewis. This has been the New Hampshire Filmmaker Interview Series right here on PPM-TV. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.